everyone. I'm attorney Aiden Durham with 180 Lawco in Colorado. You are watching All Up In Your Business where today we're gonna go through your comments and answer your legal questions. Eh? Okay. Before we do that though, if you're new to All Up In Your Business, welcome. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you click that little bell so you get notified anytime I post a new video. And you can check the description for links to some additional information and resources, including a link to download my free Brandish trademark guide, where you're gonna learn all kinds of stuff about trademarks. Oh, and one other thing before we get into it, I am a lawyer, but I'm not your lawyer, unless you're one of my clients who's watching, then I am. But for everybody else, I'm not your lawyer, and the stuff I talk about in this video is not a substitute for actual legal advice. If you need help with any legal situation, you should consult with a lawyer. Okay, now that all of that is out of the way, with no further ado, let's get into your questions and start off with a really interesting trademark question. It says, if my DBA is a partnership, do I need to get approval from my partner or include my partner on the form as an owner when filing to trademark the name? That is interesting and I uh, the answer is mainly going to turn on what the terms of your partnership agreement say. I, I don't think really it's going to make a difference one way or the other. In theory, as partners, if we're talking a general partnership, both partners, let's say there are two partners in a general partnership, both partners are responsible for the partnership and are agents of the partnership. So um, in theory, they can bind the partnership. And in many partnership agreements or documentations, it will say something to that effect. So in that sense, there shouldn't really be a need for both partners to be listed on the application. You put the partnership name um, as the DBA and then one partner because that one partner can act on behalf of the partnership as a whole. If there is something in the partnership agreement or maybe in state law, I don't know, some states may be different. Um, I have to, I don't deal a whole lot with just general partnerships. I'd have to dust off my business entities textbook from law school. Anyway, if there's something in the partnership agreement that says otherwise, like the partners can't uh, bind each other illegally, then in that case, you would probably need your partner um, to be listed as an owner as well. Um, like practically speaking though, the USPTO isn't going to do too much digging. If they see that it's a partnership as the applicant and here's one of the partners named on it, they're gonna kind of take it at your word that you had the agency and authority to file this on behalf of the partnership. Um, the trouble might come up when the other partner maybe tries to challenge it. So the issues won't necessarily arise from the application itself, they'll arise from later on, maybe if you didn't actually have that authorization. So uh, kind of roundabout way, no, probably not, but if your partnership agreement says something otherwise, then yeah, you might need to name your partner on the application application as well. Uh, best advice, talk to a lawyer, like actually consult with a lawyer about it because there's a lot of intricacies and it depends. Someone trademarks a name as the repairman. Is it possible to trademark a name as repairman? Um, it is going to depend mainly on the associated goods and services. If let's say it's both, I don't know, home repair, like handyman services, if both companies are doing the same thing, then um, no. I, I would pretty confidently say that the repairman is going to prevent the repair, uh, prevent repairmen from being registered. Those will most certainly be confusingly similar. Um, if they're completely unrelated industries, like one is home repair and one is, I don't know, cat grooming, then no, uh, it, then yeah, you'd probably be able to get repair men registered if they're totally different goods and services. But um, just based on the two names, the two names are identical, basically. In the eyes of the USPTO, the names are pretty much identical. So the closer related the goods and services, the higher chance that it will get rejected. What a great question. Big, good question. I'm sorry, but what is the difference between published and unpublished? And this is specifically a copyright question. So in the copyright world, the word published has a very specific 
meaning. It's a term of art that doesn't mean what we normally think it means. And there's a really good explanation. Someone already responded to this comment and gave a really, I mean, pretty accurate breakdown explanation of what it is. Published with copyrights, the easiest way to think about it is that you've um, given rights in that work to somebody else. So if we're talking like paintings or artwork, this means you've maybe sold your artwork to somebody else, or you put it on a stock photography photo uh, website. You've now given a license, you've, you know, licensed out those rights to this stock photography website, who's then going to license it to end users. Or if you made it available for sharing or downloading, if you wrote a book and people can download or purchase your book, then it's been published. Things like just displaying work though, usually isn't going to count as being published. Good example is just a web page, maybe a blog. Just because it's up there and people can read it, that doesn't on its own mean that it was published. There's usually gotta be something indicating that people can do something with it. Maybe like a download this blog button or share this to your friends, share this on social media, print this page, some direction that is giving the reader um, instruction that they can now do something with this blog or this article that we've read. Uh, that's mainly the difference between publication and not published. It's complicated. I'm sure that explanation confused some of you even more. I'm going to do a whole video pretty soon about published and unpublished and what publication means in the copyright world. So stay tuned for that if you're still not quite sure or read this person's explanation because it's pretty spot on. Would the name Boston Junk for a waste removal company located in Boston be considered descriptive? Wow. Here's a fun answer for you. Yes, it's descriptive. Boston junk is descriptive. But what the real question is, is it merely descriptive? It's okay to have a descriptive trademark. There's nothing that prohibits descriptive trademarks from being registered with the USPTO. It's only when they are merely descriptive does it become a problem. Now on its face, Boston junk, I think would be considered merely descriptive. Uh, Boston, of course, describes where it's located and junk describes some characteristic of what you're doing. We're removing junk. We're removing trash. Um, so in that sense, I would say, yes, Boston junk is merely descriptive. But I could see some arguments being made for why it's not merely descriptive. Maybe it's suggestive instead. Maybe there's some secondary meaning to the word junk. I don't know, just totally off the top of my head. There's like, no offense to anyone from Boston. I love Boston, but uh, folks from Boston have a kind of reputation of being like, you know, blue collar, salt of the earth, um, you know, tough, people kind of thing. I could see some argument being made that the word junk maybe somehow is describing people of Boston or, or has some other word um, associated with Boston or some other meaning associated with it. I'm totally just riffing off the top of my head. I have no idea if those are actual legitimate things. But the point is, if we can make some argument that there's some secondary meaning or some other distinctiveness to the trademark, then just because it's descriptive, it's not necessarily merely descriptive. So the answer is yes, probably, but potentially you could get around a descriptiveness refusal for Boston junk. So I want to make and sell millions of stickers with a distinct design around the border. If time goes on and I have sold maybe thousands of these stickers with this design, can someone else come along and trademark my design and force me to stop using it? Um, there's a, a comment, a response here, which is helpful. I'm going to elaborate on that a little bit. No, the answer is no, not really. Um, if you don't have a trademark registration, but you've been selling thousands of these stickers over a handful of years, you can probably pretty easily establish earlier use against someone who then later on 
someone comes around to file a trademark application for it. Your rights, because you are the earlier user, your rights would um, be greater than theirs. They wouldn't be able to stop you from using that trademark. But because you don't have a trademark registration, we're relying on your common law rights, there, there may be some limitations to them. So let's say you were selling these stickers, but only in your state. Your rights might be limited to the geographic area where you've actually been using the trademark. So can someone come around and stop you from using it? No, but could someone else come in and carve out some rights into what you have, maybe, potentially. And so the second comment of that's why it's important to keep your receipts and make social media accounts for your company so you have established use uh, history as evidence, that's, that's always helpful, of course. Receipts, social media accounts, any history that we can um, point back to and say, look, here's all this evidence of us operating under this trademark, using this trademark since way back when, that's all gonna be helpful for sure. If I wanna change a DBA name, should I close the current DBA registration and register a new one or just change the current name? This is going to maybe depend on the state that you're in. These DBA and trade name registrations are done with the state and each state is a little different. I'm gonna be able to go off of what I know of Colorado only. And in Colorado, the trade name registration, if you wanted to change it, you would withdraw the existing trade name registration and file a new one. I'm assuming it's the same in most, if not all other states. You would you wouldn't necessarily change the DBA, but you withdraw the existing one and file a new one. So my company's name is DDR Express, and it means Damaged Drywall Repair Express, and I have a logo. So if those terms are generic, should I just trademark my logo? So hold on, what's the trademark? What's the trademark we're dealing with? Is the trademark Damaged Drywall Repair Express? No. It's DDR Express. We know, okay, you've told me that DDR stands for Damaged Drywall Repair, but I'm looking at it. If I see DDR Express, I'm not gonna automatically know that's what that means. So just because the, 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 the abbreviation or the acronym stands for some generic or descriptive terms, that doesn't then mean your trademark is generic or descriptive. So DDR Express wouldn't be generic or descriptive. Um, assuming it's available and stuff, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to get a trademark registration for the name DDR Express. Now, if you also tried to get a registration for damaged drywall repair express, that would probably be considered merely descriptive because it describes what you're doing. And in that case, let's pretend that was the case, then um, trademarking the logo would give you some kind of roundabout way of kind of protecting that trademark, you would still have to probably disclaim the literal elements because they are descriptive or generic terms, um, but it would give you a trademark registration for the logo. So um, yeah, you could do that. You don't need to though. Can I trademark my DBA? And is my DBA anything more than a DBA? An LLC? I'd like it to be a PMA if that's possible. Private Membership Association. Can you, okay, let's break this down. Can I trademark my DBA? Yes, the actual question is, is your DBA a trademark? Which if you're operating your business under this DBA, if you're doing business under that name, then the DBA is a trademark and you can register that trademark with the USPTO. Is my DBA anything more than a DBA? I don't know exactly what you mean by that, but no, the DBA is just a DBA. Is it an LLC? No, an LLC is an LLC and an LLC can have a DBA, but also a sole proprietor can have a DBA, a partnership can have a DBA, a corporation can have a DBA. A DBA is just a nickname. It's a nickname for either the sole proprietor, the partnership or the LLC. So having a DBA does not create an LLC. It also doesn't create anything else. Again, it's just a DBA. Uh, I don't know what a PMA is. I'm not familiar with private membership associations, but it's also not that. You would have to form a private membership association if you wanted a private associate member membership association, whatever it is. I don't know what those are. Um, so yes, you can trademark your DBA and your DBA is just a DBA and a trademark.
All right, last one, this is fun. I'm a percussion manager for a high school marching band and I give the color guard the nickname Arnie's Angels. Can I give that a trademark? Um, yeah, probably. Uh, fun little fact, you guys, I was in the color guard in middle school. I was out there tossing flags, throwing rifles around, all that stuff. Big fan, big fan of color guard. You go Arnie and your Arnie's Angels. Um, yeah. Arnie's Angels, that name for your group could uh, be considered a trademark. I don't see why it couldn't be. You could register it under entertainment services. You know, I don't know if there's a category specifically for color guard, but um, you know, color guard performances, performances by a color guard team. Um, and then for the specimen, I suppose you would have to have maybe some posters that advertise, oh, come watch Arnie's Angels perform on this date, or maybe a website. Arnie, all about Arnie's Angels, and then talking about their performances. Come see them here. Watch this recording of their show. Um, if that's the case, if you've got all that, if you're using it as a trademark, if you're like putting the name out there so people will recognize Arnie's Angels is this really cool color guard team, then yeah, it's a trademark and you can register it assuming it's available. All right, I think that's enough for this round of answering your questions and going through your comments. If you learned a thing or two, please do give me a thumbs up. Again, make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notified when I post a new video and check the description for more info and resources like that free Brandish trademark guide that you can download, link down in the description. We talked a lot about DBAs, especially with that last question of what is a DBA? Is a DBA an LLC? I have a whole video talking a lot more about what exactly is a DBA and what it means to have or operate under a DBA. Check that out right there. I'll meet you guys over there. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Aiden Durham and I'll see you next time.